Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Okay, thank you, Junior. Uh, so uh, let's start uh, today's tutorial on time series uh, data and analysis. Let me just share my screen. Uh, I believe you have already uh, had a, a tutorial on time series analysis. Uh, so uh, it, it's kind of revision, right? So uh, so a time series is a, a set of observation uh, on a quantity uh, collected over time, right? Uh, it's it's based on time. Uh, in time series analysis, we analyze the past behavior of uh, the variable in order to predict uh, its future behavior, right? So there are different examples of uh, <clears throat> time series data, like sales data, gross national product, unemployment rate, population, foreign debit, uh, interest rate, etc. Right. So the the objective is using the the past data. How can we uh, predict the the, the future? Uh, so. Uh, this time series has uh, four components. Um, the first one is trend, and the second one is uh, seasonality, uh, cyclical variation, and irregular variation, or uh, sometimes we call it residual, right? Uh, so when we see trend, it's the long term growth or decline of the the <coughs> the series sorry <coughs> so uh it's it's a long term growth or decline of uh some some variable that we want to predict right so uh, as, uh it, this trend identifies the the underlying direction of the data it might be increasing or decreasing or uh, remains constant. So uh, it's the long term direction of the data, and it's usually described by what we call it the uh, best line fit or uh, line of best fit, uh, like the least square, uh, the least square uh, curve. Uh, the, the, the other one is seasonality variation. Uh, which means uh, the the series changes over time, but it repeats itself regularly, right? It it might be a, a daily seasonal variation, or it might be a weekly uh, or monthly, but it has to be regular. The the recurrence or the repetition of that pattern uh, is regular right so seasonal variation are usually due to differences between seasons and festive occasions such as easter and christmas right for example uh, sale of uh, air conditioner in summer right uh, uh, heat i mean th there are different examples uh, or th that depends on the season right so during summer, uh, we, we need to warm, right? Which means uh, people buy the, the, I mean, people, I mean, people buy the air conditioner. Uh, since it's summer, that means we, we, we feel hot. So we want to get cold. Um, yeah, so there are different examples. Uh, on seasonality, uh, cyclic variation. Um, it's not like seasonal, but there are recurring patterns uh, with longer and more erratic time scale compared to the seasonal variations, right? The, 
they, they, they have recurring par patterns, but they might not be regular. Uh, and we don't know when they're going to repeat themselves. So it, it's, it's not like the seasonal, but it has uh, recurring patterns. And regular, uh, irregular variations or residuals, uh, this time series occurs over varying, usually short period of times uh, with some spikes. When something happens, uh, those variations will occur, right? So it follows no patterns at all. Um, by nature, it's unpredictable. It usually occurs randomly and may be linked to events that occur randomly, right? Um, uh, irregular variance can't be explained mathematically because it, it's chaotic and unpredictable. If the variation cannot be uh, accounted for um, trend, season, uh, and cyclic variation, that's, then it's usually attributed to um, irregular variation. Um, yeah, there, there are some examples that you can look at. Um, that other time series terms that we need to know uh, are stationary and non-stationary. Um, uh, to to, to uh, model or forecast uh, a series data, we usually uh, need the data to be stationary. So what does that mean? Which means the time series variation exhibits uh, no significant upward or downward trend over time. Right, which means that the mean and the standard deviation has to be constant, right? So in that case, we, we say that the data is stationary. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's, it's non-stationary. That means uh, it exhibits significant either upward or downward trend uh, over time. Uh, in that case, it's non-stationary. Uh, but we can, we can change non-stationary data uh, into uh, stationary data. And seasonal data, as, as we said in, uh, earlier, uh, it varies or uh, it, uh, repeating patterns uh, at regular intervals over time. This, the, the interval has to be regular, either weekly or monthly or quarterly. So seasonality is regular, uh, repeating patterns in time series data. Uh, and it may be additive or it may be multiplicative in nature. Uh, if it's additive, it's it's going to be like um, a, a sinusoidal graph. Uh, let me just share you one good uh, picture about additionality and multiplicative uh, of yeah, th these two graphs. I hope you can see them. Uh, let me put them like this. You see, uh, as you can see, this is this is the additive seasonal effect, and this one is the multiplicative uh, seasonal effect, which means somehow you. If this is like year, uh, and if the the value is like sales, which means every year the the pattern repeats, but uh, it increases the value or the magnitude, not not the value, rather the magnitude, because when it decreases, the, the 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 magnitude is increasing. The, this is multiplicative, and this is uh, additive. Uh, seasonal effects. Um, yeah, so this these are some of the uh, time series terms that we need to know about before uh, we try to see the the models. So yeah, we will we will see them in example. Uh, are there any questions? Is it clear? Any questions? Anyone? Okay, uh, then let's move on. Um, 
so basically uh, i will i will import two uh, time series data uh, one is like a stationary kind and the other is non stationary so here i have a daily total female birth right it's a csv file so i will read uh, that one uh, and if i plot it uh, I, I get this, right? <clears throat> so we, we said uh, as times time goes, uh, we said no more uh, either down or uh, up uh, change in the in the in, in the data, right? Th this looks like up and down, up and down, but the the the, the pattern. Uh, is like stationary, right? If you take the mean, uh, it, it will the, the 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 mean or the moving average. Uh, we can say that it, it will be like a horizontal line, right? If you take the the, the means and the standard deviations, uh, by looking at it, it, it it looks like stationary, right? But we will we will check that uh, stat statistically, right? Um, and if you, if you just write the, the distribution, um, it's, it's more like Gaussian, right? It's more like Gaussian. Um, and the other thing, uh, you can check or we divide the, the data into two, uh, it's links of, uh, the data divided by two, and then I take the first half to be x1, and then the second half to be x2, and then I, I, I compute the mean. That means what I did is I divide this data into two halves, the, the left and the right, and then compute the means. If they are closer, uh, that shows um, a stationarity, right? Uh, uh, just graphically, it, it's not the, the right way, but uh, yeah. So we also compute the variance of X1 and X2. And then uh, when we print them, uh, as you can see, it's like 39.76, 44.18. And this one is 49.21. And this one is 48.7. Uh, they, are, they are closer. So... This is a sign that the, the data um, is stationary, but we need to we need to do a statistical test to determine if it's stationary or not. So the, the second uh, time series data is the air passengers. That means number of passengers uh, uh, per day, I, I believe. Um, I mean per month. Uh, per month. Uh, here. If you just take this one, the, the, the men's column will be like a string. So you have to type cast that into a uh, date time. And then uh, you set the index to be uh, that column. So what we did is uh, we convert this into date time and set it as an index. And we will have uh a, a, a series data where the the index are the year end months the year end months like this one so this is this is the index so the index is not uh auto generated uh integer rather it's uh, a date type it's a date type so if you if you just check the index uh, you can see that it's the years the months and the date uh, this is auto-generated because it doesn't have a date, so it takes the first day, uh, day of uh, each month. Uh, and its data type is date time, uh, the name and the links, etc. So if you check, <coughs> uh, so we're just converting it to time series. We, we're just taking the, the number of passengers and we're creating a series data, right? And then just like 
any index, you can access the values by passing the, the year, hyphen the months, hyphen the, the date. But the date is always 0 0.1 because it's auto-generated when we type cast the, the men's uh, column to uh, date time. Uh, you can also specify the date time like year, months, and date, and that will be like an index and it will access the, the value. It will access the value. Yeah. Uh, so if we plot this, um, unlike the, the previous one, um, as you can see, uh, there is some seasonality and there's also a trend, right? The, the, the overall, it's, it's increasing, right? So we, we can see there is a trend, uh, but it doesn't look like stationary, right? Um, if I divide, just like before, if I divide the data into two and compute the mean to the left and the mean to the right, um, they, they, they are not going to be closer, right? So the mean to the left will be around this one, whereas the mean around uh, to, to the right will be around there, right? Which means there, is, there will be a big difference between the mean and the, the, uh, the, the standard deviation, which means the data um, might not be stationary. Uh, we, we can't say for sure by looking at it or just by computing the mean that the data is stationary or non-stationary. Uh, we have to make sure, we have to do the statistics. Uh, we will come to that one. So if we do the, the summary statistics, just like the previous one, we divide the data into two, and then we compute the mean and the variance. And then when, when we see the mean here is 182.90, and here is 377.7. So that one is smaller than this one. Again, even the variation, that's 2,244.08, and this one is uh, 7,367.96. So there is a, 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 a big difference between the means and the variance, which means it's, it's an indication, not, not for sure, right? It's an indication that the data uh, is non-stationary, non-stationary. But that, that is just for exploration. We need to do the statistics. If we do the, the histogram, um, as you can see, it's, it's a squashed um, distribution. So yeah, uh, values not looking like Gaussian, right? Uh, therefore, mean and variance values are less meaningful in this case. And this squash distribution of observations may be another uh, indicator of non-stationary time series. So reviewing the plot of the time series again, we can see that there is an obvious seasonality component and it looks like seasonal component is also growing. That means we have a trend. Uh, this may suggest an exponential growth from season to season, right? Um, so if this looks like um, exponential, uh, exponentially growing, uh, taking the logarithm, we might transform it to um, a flat or into a stationary data. So to convert a non-stationary data to stationary data, we do some transformations, one of uh, which be uh, the log log transformation, log transformation. So if we take the uh, the log of the data, the, this considering this is like an exponential, that it's not uh, uh, taking the log. Uh, as you can see, the now the distribution it it it's it's better than the previous one, right? The the the, the they are like. Not not Gaussian like, but they, they are definitely better than the previous ones, right? 
Um, and now if we compute the, if we divide the, um, the, the new value, that's the log value, right? And compute the right hand side and the left hand side, uh, we can see that the mean to the left is 5.17, the mean to the right is 5.9, and the variation is 0 0.06, and the variation to the right is 0 0.04, right? Which means uh, the, 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 the variation or the difference of the means and the variance uh, between the left and the right hand uh, are almost the same, which means it looks like a stationary. That's after transformation, after we took the, the log of the, the data, the log of the data. Uh, but these are just um, a quick uh, and easy way to, to say something about the, the, the data, but they, they might be easily fooled you. Uh, you, you need to be careful. Uh, the, the only way we can make sure that it's stationary or non-stationary is by uh, doing the <clears throat> statistical tests. Statistical tests. Uh, the the first one uh, that that we're going to use is the augmented uh, DQ Fuller test. So um, it's like the the ABI hypothesis testing, right? It's a statistical test. So we will have a null hypothesis and uh, an alternative hypothesis. So the, the null hypothesis is that the time series data is non-stationary, right? And then we can we compute the, the, the p-value, and then if that p-value is uh, less than uh, 0 0.05, then we will reject the null hypothesis, right? Which means, uh, we are saying that the time series data is uh, stationary. But if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, uh, which means we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means uh, we are saying that the, the time series data uh, is non-stationary, is non-stationary. Um, and also uh, we can compute the mean and the standard deviation the rolling statistics. Uh, so if we do that, and this is just a function, right? It takes a time series data, it computes the roll mean, the standard deviation. Here we, we, we are taking window of 12, that like in 12 windows. And then <clears throat> we plot them and then we, we uh, where did we, yeah, from uh, start models uh, dot TSA dot start tools import AD filler. That's our uh, statistical test module. We pass the time series and the auto lag, uh, what you call it, uh, auto lag parameter. Well, we will see this one uh, when we discuss about ARIMA, I believe. So we get that test and this test uh, will return different values like the test statistics, the P value, the lags used, number of observations used, et cetera. So we, we print them out. Uh, this is the, the visualization, right? As you can see, the, the rolling mean is not constant. It, it's increasing somehow. Right, uh, and also, yeah, the, the the standard deviation looks looks stationary or looks constant, not stationary, constant, right? Um, which means uh, this 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 doesn't look um, uh, what you call it stationary. But the the the, the main or the important uh, point here is the p value. As you can see, it's 0 0.99, which is greater than the uh, significance level, which is 0. Point, uh, level of significance, which is 0 0.05, right? Which means uh, we 
are rejecting then I mean we fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? Uh, which means we can uh, say that this might not be uh, stationary. Stationary. Uh, yeah, you can check the critical values also. Um, but if we take the, the the first the first data, that's the daily total female birth uh, data. Uh, as you can see, well, uh, as you can see, the the red one that's the mean, the uh, black one that's the rolling standard deviation. They 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 look like horizontal, which means they are almost constant, right? They are almost constant. If we take again the the average, we might get uh, a full horizontal line. So. Uh, that's just an indication, as I said earlier, the important one is the p-value. As you can see, the p-value is uh, 0 0.005, which is less than the, the level of significance, which means uh, we have to reject the null hypothesis, which means we are saying that the data is stationary. Data is stationary. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions? Is it clear? Hello? Can you not say something, please? All right. Um, it would be great if you ask questions. You guys are just listening. No question? OK. Uh, let me continue. All right. Uh, so if the, the number of passengers data, uh, if it's not stationary, um, which means it's not advisable to apply uh, uh, statistical or forecasting or regression models or on that data, uh, uh, which means we need to find a way to convert it into stationary. So making the time series to stationary, the, the first attempt would be taking the, the, log, fun, the log of the data. Um, uh, assuming that if it's uh, an exponential, taking the exponential will make it like a constant, right? Um, or a linear, uh, yeah. So if we if we do that, um, this is the the log. Uh, where is it? Hmm? Just statistical test. Yes. Okay. Stationary. Hmm? Uh, sorry, yeah, here. Uh, no, I, I don't want this data. I want, uh, where is it? The, the, so this is the DF. Uh, I want the DF, not the series data. Uh, I was confused. So let's say ds uh, <coughs> is equals to df dot, uh, yeah, this data. So we want uh, this log, okay. So if we check the stationary thing, that means uh, rolling mean and rolling standard deviation. Um, as you can see, uh, it's it's much better, but still it's not uh, constant, right? But the standard deviation is 
constant, but the mean or the rolling mean, it's not still uh, constant, right? It's increasing. Um, that, that's why this p-value uh, is small, but it's still greater than the uh, level of significance 0 0.05, which means it's still not stationary, right? We take the, the log, but still it's not stationary, which means we need to uh, explore more. Uh, and for that, um, uh, we already did that. That's the, uh, the rolling mean. Uh, what we do is from the log, we, we, we subtract the moving average. From the log, we subtract the uh, moving average. Uh, since uh, the rolling window is 12, here the first 12 values will be none. Uh, since we are computing 12 at a time, the, uh, the difference, so the, the first uh, 12 values will be none. So this is a log moving average difference, log moving average. From the log, we subtract the uh, moving average. When we do that, we get this, and then we drop the first of the, the, the none values, right? Uh, and then we will have the data. Now, if we plot it, the uh, log moving average difference, as you can see, the, the, the rolling mean and the rolling standard deviation, uh, even the, the, the log uh, moving average difference is like a stationary, like stationary. So the, the, the p-value, as you can see, it's 0 0.002, which is less than the uh, level of significance, which means um, we reject the null hypothesis. That means the, the, the data is now a stationary, right? Once we have that data, then we can use that data to um, uh, forecast using different uh, statistical models. Uh, the, the other one is the weighted mean average. The, uh, the, we take the log and we use the exponential, sorry, exponential weighted average with a span of 12. And when we do that, uh, that that's the data, the, the red one. And then if we take the um, stationarity, uh, as you can see, they, they, they are almost stationary. So there are different ways to uh, make the non-stationary data into uh, stationary. We just transform uh, using different transform uh, transform methods. And this one, we take the shift. That means the log minus the log shift. Um, it's like the, the, the lag, a glib. Uh, when we do that, uh, this is the data, which looks stationary, but if we take the ADR test, we can see that uh, now they are stationary. And the p-value is 0. Point, wow, that's greater than, right? That doesn't look right. It's closer, but it's not right. What did I do? This, this log dot, okay. Uh, I'm working on the same data, I believe. Um, okay, but yeah, uh, so may, maybe the uh, log minus log shift might, might not be the, the best way to make it stationary, that, that's what it means. It, it looks, it's getting closer to be stationary, but the, the statistical p-value is saying that uh, with uh, a 0 0.05 level of significance, uh, this is not stationary. This is not stationary. See, that's why we, we need to get the p-value uh, and we, we, we 
uh, it might lead us to the wrong conclusion. That's what I want to say. By just looking at the data, I thought it was stationary, uh, but the p-value is suggesting different, which means it's not stationary. All right. Uh, seasonality decomposition. Uh, as I said earlier, um, the components of a series data are trained, seasonal, and residual. Uh, there is cyclic, but yeah. <clears throat> And we said that this seasonality can be additive or multiplicative. So depending on the model, you can have the original data by uh, taking the, the, the base uh, plus the trend plus the seasonality plus the residual or some multiplication of these uh, components. The, the, the mathematics behind can be yeah uh, um can be detailed that that's why i didn't do it here so the the, the components the trend the seasonality and the residual so you, you need to import uh seasonal decompose from start models to dot tsa uh, dot seasonal and then decomposition uh this will return uh uh like an array right that contains the trend the seasonal and the residual right so uh here we are we are plotting the the log of the data and the trend the seasonal and the residual right if we do that um yeah so this is the original data as you can see, the, the trend is um, increasing, right? This has uh, an increasing trend. And you can see the, se the seasonality, right? It's recurring uh, regularly. That's the seasonality. And the residual, it's, it's chaotic and it's unpredictable. Uh, so the sum of all these three will result the original one. The trend plus the seasonality plus the residual. Uh, sometimes uh, they they take weights, but yeah, the, the idea is that this sum will uh, give the the original data. So this is how you explore uh, a time series data, right? And then uh, now we 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 take our attention to the residual, right? The, this looks stationary but let's let's see if it's true so that's the residual log decomposition residual we drop the none and we test it if it is uh, a stationary or not right so if we do that uh, yeah it looks stationary the p-value that's zero uh, 2.88 times 10 raised to minus 8 which means it's it's stationary. It's stationary. So if it's stationary, then using the the residual, we can do the uh, prediction. Uh, so finally, we will have forecasting, right? Uh, after transforming the the non-stationary data, uh, if if at the beginning, if the data is stationary, then we can do our modeling. Uh, but if it's not, we have to uh, transform it uh, to um, stationary. So the, the, the first for, for forecasting model that we can see is the uh, ARIMA model. It's, it's a combination or integration of two models. That's the autoregressive, uh, that's AR, right? Integrated uh, moving average. So we are integrating the auto regressive uh, model in the moving average model, and the AR, the auto regressive models, the the the, the concept of lag, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, this wasn't. Yeah. Sorry. 
So the, the in this Arima, it's a combination of uh, two models and it has three components basically. So the first one is the autoregressive and it has a parameter uh, P, right? And it involves regressing the values on its own lagged past values. So the number of lagged observation, including in the model, is denoted by P. So the AR has a parameter P, and the integrated part, it involves differencing observation. Uh, that means subtracting an observation from the previous one to make the time series stationary. So the number of times that the data needs to be differentiated, right? Like the log uh, minus log shift, right? That's the first order. And if we if that's not uh, stationary, we do the differencing again, right? Like the, the result we obtained minus the result dot shift. So we do that multiple times or d times until we get a stationary uh, series uh, data, right? So that's the order. Uh, and the moving average part, it involves modeling the error terms as a linear combination of error terms at the previous time, uh, time points. So that it has a, a Q parameter and that's the lagged uh, forecast error in predicting uh, a prediction equation in the prediction equation. Uh, just forget this this um, math mathematical equation. Uh, just know that in the ARIMA model, uh, we have three parameters, P, D, and Q. P is for the uh, uh, R, D is for the integration, that's the, the order of differencing, and Q is for the moving average. So this is the AR model. Uh, and there are ways to choose the, the lags. That means the value of P and DQ. Um, and for, for that, we, we need to compute the autocorrelation function and the partial uh, autocorrelation functions. And the SEF, that's uh, autocorrelation function or the plot shows the correction of time series with its own lagged values, right? And uh, PSF, it shows the partial correction of the time series with its own lagged values, controlling for the values of the uh, time series at all the shorter uh, lags. So these this two plots are uh, important to determine the value of P and the Q, basically. And for those, we, we pass some information criteria like AIC, BIC, and HQI. Uh, yeah, they just know those can be, I mean, the, 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 the choosing the lag or the parameter P, Q, and T affects your model. So in order to get a good model or a good predictive model, we need to find uh, uh, best values or good values for the, the parameters. And we do that uh, by uh, using those uh, uh, SF and PCF plots, which takes this uh, criteria. And the, the steps are this, right? You plot and then identify the significant lags from PSF plot uh, for ARM, that means for the value of P, right? And then identify the significant slugs from SF plot uh, for MAR, right? For MAR, that's Q. For AR, that's P. And D is the, the uh, differencing order. And then, uh, fit the ARIMA model with varying P, D, and Q values, and compare the models using uh, BIC, BI, uh, AIC, and other relevant criteria or uh, matrices, those, those uh, matrices. All right, so how can we plot the autocorrelation uh, function and the partial autocorrelation function? 
we just simply import them from statsmodel.tsa stat plots uh, import sf and PC, uh, psf and then we we specify the lags right that this is the log difference number of lags 20 and number of lags 20 and the method is uh, OLS. So if we do that and we do that, we get that. So, uh, yeah, these are the, the confidence intervals for the uh, SF. Similarly, <clears throat> um, and then once we have that, we can we can apply the the aroma, and for that uh, we will have a, a train data, and then we can do a prediction. So the model is aroma. Uh, we give the history and the order. The order that's the p value, the d value, and the q value, right? And then we fit the model. Uh, and then we forecast the outputs. Uh, this is to get um, what what's varying here is the the t value, right? Uh, how does it affect the model then? Do we have any random error prediction error? <laughs> Oh, oh, this is for the test, not for the training. So this is for the test data. <laughs> for for the different, uh, we, 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 are, we are predicting and comparing it with the expected. <laughs> so that's the predicted value. 6.16 expected value 5.75 uh, etc etc so the um, finally we'll get the mean square error um find the inconsistent number of samples what did we do uh, maybe I, I didn't run it. Uh, right. I think I, I forgot to run this, the, the train and test split. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, the, the mean square error is 0 0.09, which is uh, good, right? Uh, so, sorry, changing these values might change your, uh, God, your prediction. Um, yeah, so, you, the, this is the, the, the test and predict plot. Um, yeah, I think that that's it for today. Uh, you can read about uh, auto aroma, uh, etc. I think that that's enough. Uh, are there any questions? Hello? Is it clear? Hello? Okay, Matthews, Nadia. Um, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Like, it's, uh, it's all right. Like, yeah, then ask questions. Uh, like, I need to if go. It's okay. clear. No, it's it's so, okay. So, ask a question. That's why. Okay. Um, then, if you don't have any question, then we call it for the day. Uh, have a good evening. Bye.